Hi, my name is Richard Walters. In this demonstration, we're going to look at project views and tables in Microsoft Project. These two areas will now be covered in this demonstration. In this demonstration, we're going to look at tables and views in Microsoft Project. We'll first look at views, then we'll look at tables. So I tend to look at views through the task tab and in the view section of the ribbon to the left. And there's a little drop down now next to the Gantt chart icon. Now Gantt chart is the default view. That's why it's got a tick next to it. Now this view is for putting the project together. So you can see when the duration is, you can see when the start is and the finishes, but you can also see how the task bars are looking. And this is how you start a project off in Gantt chart view. And it's then used for managing projects and looking at what's happening. So it's a really fundamental view. Another view is resource sheets, very useful. So let me go back to Gantt chart drop down resource sheet. This is where you enter all your resources for a project. Another useful view is resource usage. So when resources have been assigned, you can then see how they're being used. So for example, here, the engineering manager resource is on something called the design job specification task. And we can see it's eight hours for four days in a particular week. And it says it's 32 hours. So quite a useful view for seeing how a resource is being used. Another view that's useful is task usage. So task use is the same idea as the resource, except it shows you how the task has been used. So for example, if I was looking at the design job specification, it, see, it, it now tells me there's 16 hours work on that particular um, task a day. So that means there's more than one resource on it. So that gives me useful information. So you can move back and forth between the views and these are really the four big views in project. I'm going to change back to Gantt chart. And we're going to look at some of the tables now. So table is the area on the left hand side that almost looks like an Excel spreadsheet. So this is called a table. Now this table changes, depends on the information that you are wanting to see or utilize. So the default table is called entry. I can tell this by looking at the view tab data section of the ribbon, tables dropped an arrow, and I can see a tick next to entry. So really talking about data entry, so that's where you go into your Gantt chart and you start entering some data. So that's why we're talking at the entry table. Another useful table is the cost table. So cost shows you when you've assigned resources to task and you put task and you put resource costs against the resource. You can now see the allocation of costs. So I know that on the one task, design job specification, there's an allocated cost against that of just under £2,000. So very, very useful information. I'm going to change the table again now to another table. Another, another useful table is the variance table. This tells us whether we've got a baseline set. If you ever see NA, NA means no baseline's been set. So when a baseline is set, what would happen is the start and finish dates would be copied straight into the baseline start and finish, because that's what you are being measured against. And then if there's any change then in the start and finish dates, when the baseline has been set, the start variance will then change to indicate what the change is. So a very, very useful table. Another one is the schedule table. Now this shows you about critical path. So when one needs to manage the critical path, this is a very useful table. And we can look at critical path by going to a Gantt chart format and turning on critical tasks. And right now everything is critical. But if I do something to one of the tasks and I put a constraint in, you can see what happens to this table. So right now critical, talks about zero free slack. So zero free slack, that's what critical means. 
So I'm going to put slack in this particular example against second interview. I'm just going to delay it for a little bit period of time. And it's due to start on the 22nd of March. So I'm going to delay it for a couple of weeks and we'll see what it looks like then. So that's when it's due to start the 22nd of uh, March. Now I'm going to delay it until, let's say, the end of April in this example. So quite a bit of a delay. So 29th. OK. And now you can see the critical path has now changed. We've got blue bars, which means non-critical. And the reason for that is there's lots of total snack now. I've built in 26 days into the project because of that delay. And everything then from the second interview onwards becomes critical. So second interview and onwards. This is now the red bars. So this has all been affected by the constraint that's been applied to the second interview. And I can check the constraint. You might say, well, where's the constraint gone? Can't see it right now in this particular table. But if I go back to the entry table, I will see it. So different tables give you different information. Entry, and there's the constraint that's affected the different, different color of the critical path, whereby all the blues are non-critical and all the reds are critical. But this completes the training video and demonstration on tables and views in Microsoft Project. This now completes the demonstration on project views and Microsoft Project tables. See you in the next video.